Dragon Communion builds have always been very strong and very fun, and they've gotten even better in Shadow of the Art Tree. I mean, just look at this damage. There are four new things that Dragon Communion builds gained with Shadow of the Art Tree. Three incantations and the Rock Heart item, which transforms you into a dragon. I'll go over the new things and the exact build I used to do so much damage with it. Starting with the Rock Heart, as mentioned, this item will transform you into a dragon, but you do not have to be wearing any armor to use it. With no armor, you will be pretty fragile, but the form gives you a flat 10% to all damage negations and 50 to all status resistances. It's certainly not as much as armor would give you, but it helps. And it's absolutely worth it, because the form also gives you a unique buff stackable with aura and body buffs, which increases the damage of all dragon community incantations by a whopping 20%. So just simply by using this item, your current Dragon Communion build will suddenly start doing 20% more damage, which is insane when you realize how much damage these incantations were already doing. And for the new incantations, there's first Ghost Flame Breath. Put simply, this is a middle ground between Borealis Mist and Smarok's Glintstone Breath. It deals magic damage while applying Frostbite. The damage is 10% less than Smarok's, but 10% more than Borealis. And it applies Frostbite just a bit slower than Borealis. So normally if using Magic Breaths, you would bring Borealis and Smarags, using Borealis at the start of the fight for Frostbite, and then Smarags afterwards to do a ton of damage. But that takes up two memory slots. Smarags, sorry, Ghost Flame essentially lets you consolidate them both into one incantation so that you can free up a memory slot. Freeing up a memory slot may not sound that great, but since quite a few of the Dragon in Communion incantations take two memory slots, freeing up a slot is actually pretty nice. Next, Bale's Flame Lightning. Not only is this incantation super badass to look at, it's also by far the best of these three. You grow this super cool looking wing and use it to launch very far forward towards your target, slamming down and dealing a mixture of lightning, physical, and fire damage. The fire part of the damage is an explosion on the ground and comes out slightly after the slam itself, so even if the slam misses the target, the explosion might still catch them. And with how far forward you lunge while using this, despite it being a melee damage attack, you don't actually have to be in melee range. I very often use it quite a considerable distance away from the enemy, sometimes before they even see me. This makes it great at closing distance against mobile enemies. You can even turn 180 degrees with it, making it even better for those mobile enemies. And during that entire animation, you have really good hyper armor, which is very nice since we aren't using any armor, so we can't build poise. The hyper armor isn't infinite though, so some attacks from certain enemies and bosses can still knock you out of it. And another great thing about this incantation is that, immediately after the animation, you can cast any other incantation without any delay, which can be net very nice for keeping up offensive pressure. With all those pros, I haven't even mentioned the damage yet. The damage this incantation deals is simply put, phenomenal. Depending on what buffs you use, it can deal between 8-15% to more damage than Dragonmar, and Dragonmar is an extremely hard hitting attack, so 8-15% to more than that is massive. And it's even more FP efficient than Dragonmar, costing 10 less FP. Now this incantation isn't perfect though, it does have a few flaws. As mentioned, the hyper armor isn't infinite like Dragonmar's, and the hitbox and AoE on this attack are also not the greatest thing in the world. I do think it should be buffed in a balance patch to have a better AoE and hitbox, plus infinite hyper armor like Dragonmar, but even if it doesn't, this is without question one of the best Dragon Communion incantations, and should be added to your arsenal as a primary go-to option as soon as possible. Now the next one is Bale's Tyranny, and man this one looks so cool. It deals a burst of lightning damage while creating a pool of magma, dealing several instances of fire damage. This counts as Dragon Communion, AOR, lightning, fire, and magma damage, so it's very buffable. The damage it deals is tremendous, able to deal the highest damage of all Dragon Communion incantations, capable of doing around 23% more damage than Bell's Flame Lightning, which is just insane when put into perspective. But despite how great all of that is, Bell's Tyranny has some flaws that do greatly limit its use cases. 
The AoE and hitbox of it, particularly the magma, is not all that great, so unless the enemy has a large hitbox, chances are some if not all of the magma is going to miss, especially if the enemy is mobile. And the magma is a large portion of the damage, so missing that completely ruins your damage. And the range on this is also not great, so you need to be extremely close to the enemy. Furthermore, you are locked into a very long animation that can't be cancelled while using this. You do have hyper armor, so most enemies won't be able to interrupt you out of it, but they could just still kill you. Plus, like Flame Lightning, the hyper armor isn't infinite. So because of those flaws, the main use case I found for Bill's Tyranny is as a finishing maneuver on Barsis after they have been stance broken. If they still have a large amount of HP left, chances are Bill's Tyranny is just going to melt through all of that. Your vulnerability isn't going to matter at that point since the enemy is stance broken and can't move. The other use case I found is as a means to nuke a pack of enemies if they are all surrounding you from different angles and you need to be able to poise through their attacks. So now that we know about the new stuff, let's talk about the build and how I'm able to do so much damage with it. I'm on New Game Plus, so I have two Dragon Communion Seals. The Dragon Communion Seal has the second highest possible incantation scaling in the entire game, second only to the Golden Order Seal by about 2-3 to three points. So we're casting with a very powerful seal, and each Dragon Communion Seal increases the damage of all Dragon Communion incantations by 15%. Then, alongside that, the Rock Heart gives us another 20%. Buffs in Elden Ring are multiplied together, so that's rounded up a 59% multiplier to all our Dragon Communion damage, before even accounting for any buffs like the Wanderer's Physic, Talismans, or a Body and Aura buff. We factor those in, we can use Golden Vow and Hell of Shibiri for 15% and 25% respectively, so now we have a 128% multiplier. Now let's just say as an example, we're using Theodoric's Magma, and for the Talismans, we're using the Raw Medallion, Flux Talisman, Dread Talisman, and Fire Scorpion Charm. Now our multiplier is about 320% of a damage increase, which is just absurd, since these incantations have such high base damage to begin with. Not all of the attacks can get buffed quite to that extent to, due to dealing different damage types, but they do all get a ton of buffs regardless. Generally, the talisman setup that I will use is the Blue Dancer Charm. This one never leaves my build, as we are in the highest damage equip load for it since we have no armor. It will provide a 15% buff to all physical damage, which counts as Dragon Mar, Dragon Claw, Grail's Roar, the Rot Breaths, and even Bell's Flame Lightning, which gets more like a 6% increase from it than the 15%. Then the Flux and Faithful Talismans will buff all of our incantations regardless of what element their damage is, so I like to use these both. And the last slot is dependent on the exact scenario. Something like the Raw Medallion works great as it buffs all of the Breaths plus Bell's Tyranny and Grail's Roar, or you can just use a Damage Negation Talisman like the, the Dragon Crest Great Shield to help mitigate the low defenses you will have without armor. For the stats, 60 Vigor is very important with such low defenses. 38 Mind is the minimum you should be using, as Dragon Incantations consume a lot of FP. Once you're high enough level, you can take it all the way to 50 or even 60 for the final soft caps, so that you spend less time needing to chug a blue fat lask. You don't need Endurance, since increasing equip load is going to be useless for us, but having extra stamina is still very nice. I'd recommend leveling it after you have the amount of Vigor, Mind, Faith, and Arcane that you want. Strength and Dexterity should only be leveled enough to use any weapons you might want to use with this build. And if you're going to use Incantations only, which is how I prefer to play this, is just using Incantations and no weapons, then you don't need to level Strength and Dexterity at all. You want 45 Faith, because that's the soft cap for it with the Dragon Communion Seal, and then Arcane is our main damage stat, and it also softs cap at 45, but you want at least 53 to meet the requirements to cast every Dragon Communion Incantation, and you do still get 1 point of Incantation scaling for every level into Arcane beyond the soft cap. It's not a ton, but it is still more damage. For the Incantation setup, I like to go with Golden Vow, Hell of Shibiri, Bell's Flame Lightning, Dragon Mar, Bell's Tyranny, Dragon Claw, Theodoric's Magma, and any other Dragon Breath of choice. Dragon Mar is intentionally placed right after Flame Lightning, so that we can quickly get to it to use as the follow-up cast after Flame Lightning, if we need to poise through an attack that Flame Lightning wouldn't be able to. And Tyranny is right after Mar, 
to quickly get to it as soon as the enemy gets stance broken. Dragon Claw is always great to have when traversing the open world, as it is our go-to FP efficient melee attack, easily killing everything in 1-2 to two hits while having great melee AoE and hyper armor. It is inferior to Dragon Maw against bosses though, so you can remove it before a boss battle. Theodoric's Magma never leaves the build, as it is the only named Dragon Breath that can be used on horseback. They can be cast twice in a row before having to do the wind-up animation again, which lets it deal with way more overall damage than you would expect. And the body buff doesn't have to be Hell of Shibiri, it reduces your damage negations even farther, so if you are worried about survivability, you can use Flame Grant Me Strength instead. It's not that much less buffing for pure physical and fire damage, but it will be considerably less for the Bale incantations since their damage is split, and won't buff magic breaths at all if using them. You can also just use a damage negation buff like Black Flame Protect Me, if you really want to focus on survival. And that's pretty much all I have to say for now. I am also currently working on a sort of OP from the start of the game to Shadow of the Earth Tree New Game Plus type of video, showing my process of making an OP Dragon Queen build for my brand new character, all the way to the DLC on New Game Plus, which I'm super excited to finish up over the weekend. So if you liked this video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and comment your thoughts below. Thanks and goodbye.